Hello, Ankit. Hello, Leg. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine. How are you? Very well. Thanks for your wishes. On my birthday, <laughs> I received. Okay. Um, I'm very glad to see you. <laughs> like an opponent in front <laughs> of me. So, please uh, introduce yourself. Well, uh, I am Ankit and I am from India. I am a data scientist and right now I am stationed in Barcelona, Spain. And here I am uh, also doing my uh, graduate studies uh, in data science, of course. And I am also working with a research group in the area of uh, graph theory. We are working on de uh, developing algorithms for uh, detecting communities in graphs it's, it's too technical stuff so we'll skip it <laughs> and so what next <clears throat> um i think it's enough so i will ask you first question yeah um what is language in india india is uh, i should say a place of diversity and versatility there are 29 states and a lot of official languages which are spoken in all these states and more or less each state has its own official language but uh, apart from these languages there are many sub communities in each state and so they all speak different languages and technically they are uh, not languages they are dialects but uh, more or less similar to the main language but uh, although not officially India has uh, uh, the tradition of having Hindi as a language used by uh, most of the people and there is a demand so far from different sections of society to accept it as the national language but it is not yet accepted as the national language so all the government work in India is being done in three languages one in English one in Hindi and then in the local language of that state where the work is being done so uh, I think 22 to 23 different recognized languages are there in India so many languages you travel from 200 to 300 kilometers and language changes uh, as far as I remember, you uh, told about your prime minister who um, who knows around 18 languages. Yeah, there was a prime minister and uh, his name was Atal Bihari Vajpayee, a very eminent uh, orator, uh, great prime minister, and he assumed office between the years 1998 and 2004. And... Uh, at that time, the government was of uh, NDA and he was a person who had uh, respect across the world because of his these kind of uh, capabilities. He knew so many languages. He had very smooth relations with all the people. And uh, in India, he was recognized as uh, a person who had the stature of being, uh, you know, accepted by all political parties. So he was a great prime minister. Okay. Um, have you met uh, some problems to understand uh, another people, I mean from another state, uh, problem with dialects? Well, there are, there are problems, uh, always. But as I told you, India is a country which uh, has a very strong uh, uh, fabric of, uh, you know, mutual trust and uh, uh, mutual benefit people try to always uh, accept each other's language there are problems of course for example uh, at times whenever hindi was uh, you know imposed on people uh, that it should be declared as a national language there were protests people said that no we don't want it and for example south of india accepts uh, a variety of different languages and they are nowhere similar to hindi so they were rigid and uh, they wanted uh, to have their own language but even them uh, i must say with proud that they never ever insulted the national language 
uh, unofficially accepted national language i should say and uh, even till today if you go from any place uh, in india to other place where the uh, hindi is not spoken people either understand english or uh, they are able to understand a little bit of hindi so nobody is going to find any problems okay okay i see mm-hmm. so uh, my next question is i think it's popular question what is um, religion in india ah so i should uh, again reiterate the fact that india has a very strong communal fabric and this communal fabric binds together all the religions which are commonly uh, found across the world india is a country which is uh, not having any majority religion most of the people are hindus but they have a very uh, deep sense of respect for their counterparts who uh, believe in christianity who believe in islam who believe in uh, other languages for example jainism buddhism and uh, uh, sikhism like that so but but main ma- main religion is you uh, say it what Uh, most of the people uh, it's not like main religion i should not say the main religion but the majority of people are hindus majority okay but uh, it's not a count which is uh, too big to outweigh the people in minority so everybody lives uh, in close harmony and um, but yeah most of the people are hindus okay okay i see um what is the currency in india in india the official currency is rupee and uh, <coughs> one rupee is equal to 100 paise like 1 dollar equals to 100 cents so okay. like like that uh, one rupee equal to 100 paise and uh, uh, rupee although uh, relatively old currency uh, is not yet very stable financially because uh, 1 rupee equals around 75 to 80 euro uh, sorry 1 euro equals 75 to 80 rupee i just uh, said the other way uh, similarly don't worry <laughs> yeah yeah and similarly uh, i think uh, uh, 1.6 rubles or 2 rubles equals 1 rupee so more or less the currency is recognized in the world but uh, oleg we have to just hold for a moment okay um, next question about weather <coughs> uh, what is the weather in regions of india i mean in the south and in the north ways are more comfor- uh, comfortable uh, weather for tourists for example for traveling for walking ah uh, okay uh this is a very interesting question in india it's a very unique place i think one of the very few in the world where you can experience all the weather seasons from rainy to summer to winter to autumn fall everything everything so uh, also there's snow uh yeah of course for example uh, you will be very amazed if i will tell you that the very north of india the north extreme uh has the temperature of minus 50 degrees celsius sometime okay. in a year while the south is approximately plus 40 so you can see how versatile the weather is but uh, most of the seasons except the extreme north uh, which is the himalaya uh, all of the part of india experiences rains in the month of uh, i think july uh, these are monsoon rains so very beautiful of course but sometimes very risky because as you know rainy season and uh, okay. uh, the winter season in india is almost consistent uh, except the coastal parts of india which is attached to the seas the temperature remains moderate in those areas otherwise india experiences uh, the winter season with the temperature always above 0 degree celsius so not so cold but uh, in summers i must tell you that uh, the temperature goes up to 45 to sometimes 48 degrees celsius in the uh, west northwest uh, the north of india and the central india 
uh, so the central india consists of the states like uh, madhya pradesh uttar pradesh uh, some parts of uttar pradesh not uttar pradesh but some parts uh, madhya pradesh is in the center uh, then in the west or northwest i should say uh, rajasthan punjab these places are uh, warm in the summer so you should be prepared if you visit india in summer it's about 45 degree celsius okay okay so um i think it's it's really interesting uh, next question mm-hmm. um what is the most important celebrated in india when people have day off days of uh you mean celebrations yes celebrations ah in india we celebrate almost all kind of festivals festival of hindus of course and apart from that the festival of uh, other religions are also celebrated with the uh, same kind of joy so for example we celebrate diwali uh, the festival of lights and uh, this is celebrated in the year uh, in the month of uh, october october or sometimes november and uh, this is a festival of lights why i am saying so because uh, uh, people actually light their homes with colorful lights and lamps uh, to celebrate this festival and uh, with crackers uh, apart from that we have a very common festival and i think i have seen most of the russian people enjoying it very well it's called holi the festival of colors okay so uh people uh, don't work these days no, during no, no. this festival no 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 these are the most popular festivals of the hindus and uh, breaks are uh, given for these festivals holidays are given uh, for the festivals of other religion also holidays are provided for example uh, people celebrate eid it's a very popular festival of uh, islam people celebrate christmas i think today we are talking and india is having a, a, a holiday today for the christmas it's 25th mm, as per the catholic uh, calendar right but in russia people will be celebrating christmas on 6th or 7th i think yes uh, for um, during new year holidays yeah so um let, let's count first of all it's uh, uh christmas mm-hmm. yes yep. how many days do you ho- do you have for rest uh pardon i was not able to hear what uh, can you repeat pardon um how many days uh people don't work uh okay uh, this varies because the government issues the official calendar for the number of official holidays i think it's uh, more or less around 15 to 20 days in a year i think so uh you have holidays due, uh for uh 20 days and people don't work during this holiday these yes? holidays yes 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 it's uh, christmas holidays like yes mm-hmm. uh what about color festival you said um uh, not christmas holidays for each holiday one leave one vacation uh, that is one holiday one holiday okay yeah. one day you mean one day yeah one day so okay. for christmas also you get only one day leave uh, most of the places in india uh, while some organizations for example universities they are closed for about 10 days and uh, that's uh, winter vacation plus christmas holidays so they remain closed for about 10 days to 2 weeks depending upon uh, different organizations have different policies but more or less they there are 20 different kind of such festivals or something and you get 20 different uh, days off uh, for holidays in a year around 15 to 20 or sometimes a bit more it's um, during uh during this festival like right? yes yeah 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 okay okay uh it's uh two most important celebrations yes christmas and color festival uh i i should not say most important because every festival is equally important the reason is there are so many religions in india as i said so uh, and and they all are present in a considerable amount like it's not like any religion is in very small uh, you know in terms of population the population is considerably good 
for example there are a considerable number of christians considerable number of um, hindus muslims or all, all people uh, belonging to different religions so it's not like uh, one uh, festival is more important than the other because uh, similar number of people are celebrating all the festivals so more or less we give the same importance but it is more important for that religion whose festival it is so for example diwali and uh, the uh, holi the color, uh, festival of colors is more important for people who are hindus like me uh, but uh, at the same time christmas is more important for the people who are christian but the christians in india also celebrate diwali i also celebrate christmas it it is something that binds us together so it's a perfect match okay okay let's continue um what um as far as i know you um you travel a lot yeah so you That's have true. been um in many countries yes what do you see in india mm-hmm. uh what you what you don't see uh in another countries hmm okay good question what i see in india is an acceptance towards all kind of beliefs first thing in india you will never see anyone accept some elements uh, which are present in almost everywhere but most of the people in india uh, accept uh very willingly very gladly uh, the people of all kinds of uh, sects religions so this is one thing you will see in india communal harmony people are uh, accepting other religions but today when i see some other places for example uh, if you go to some place in middle east you will see that uh, there are people who do not like more number of christians or more number of hindus to come to their place this is not the situation in india so first thing is uh, people are more uh, accepting by nature for the people of other beliefs the second thing is uh, you will find more or less almost everyone speaking some uh, level of or understanding some level of english so if you are a tourist if you come to india you will not find difficulty in navigating and going to different different places because uh, more or less even the auto rickshaw driver will be understanding uh, something that you will be saying in english so it will not be very uh, difficult for you if you for example uh, the difficulty that i had uh, in russia was i was uh, i was going to shops sometimes and people were uh, uh, not able to understand what i am saying because uh, they were only understanding russian so this kind of situ- situation is is in india but to a very small extent because if you will be able to speak in english um, they might not be able to understand hindi and of course not russian but they will be able to understand you if you speak english and the reason behind this is india had been a colony of the uh, english speaking uh, countries like britain for a very long time so they have an impact even today and english is a widely spoken language and and if you remember um, in the very uh, beginning of uh, our conversation once i told you that uh, uh, most of the government work is done in three languages and english is one of them because of this reason because yeah. most of the government work was being done uh, since the old colonial times in the time of since the time of the british uh, people uh, in english so uh, in order to make the government processes smooth for all all the sections of society it is even till date done in english also okay okay so um i see that uh, you have some problems to navigate in another countries because of uh, they um, don't know english uh sometimes but as i told you again uh, uh, wherever you go you will find uh, some people who are uh, very uh, welcoming and very helping so when i was in russia i found lot of people including you who were there to help me and uh, okay. tell me things that this is that this is this and you should do this here to that there so uh, more or less i don't think if you if you are able to communicate uh, 
in at least one common language english today is more or less a common language spoken in almost every part of the country uh, of the world i mean sorry uh, so you will be able to go through it smoothly and uh, when i return from russia i have many great friends which are uh, like my strength like you and i am conver- uh, having conversation with them in english so you can see the importance of the language okay okay so i see yeah. thank you so next question yeah what's the most popular is there a sport in india in india uh, you will be very amazed if i will tell you the national sport of india is hockey but oh. it is not very popular nowadays it used to be and most of the people watch cricket but which is not the official sport and at the same time uh, people play football to a very large extent but it is not played at the international standard where india uh, is able to compete with the best teams in the world so a variety of sports but i i i believe cricket is the most popular in my opinion okay it's very cool yeah uh, next question was what is the difference between baseball and cricket strange thing uh, one reason uh, i will not be able to be very precise about this question is i have not played baseball but i will try to uh, answer it uh, in yes, case in your opinion i think yeah uh, the reason is uh, in general in baseball uh, you do not have wickets there are three stumps in cricket in baseball uh, you do not have a wicket and you have a person who is uh, you know the keeper who is catching the ball uh, uh, and there is a system of strike if someone gets out but in cricket someone gets out by a lot of ways if he uh, if the ball hits the wicket if the person gets caught and so on so uh, it's much more easier to make the batsman out in cricket than in baseball so it's more challenging and sometimes maybe yeah. or, or maybe i am biased because i play cricket <laughs> okay um who is it ch- who is the champion most of all in this game in cricket uh you mean who is the champion in terms yes i think you have some uh, championship between you and australia for example aha uh-huh, okay uh the indian team nowadays performs extremely well uh they have performed on the foreign pitches they have performed on the indian pitches india uh, ha- have won the world cup in almost uh, all uh, recognized formats and uh, recently i must tell you that uh, till recently we were one of the best cricket teams in test uh, also uh, we have one of the finest cricket uh, players in all the formats so uh, india has a very uh, rigid uh, competition with uh, a few teams for example the match between india and pakistan is very high intensity cricket match and uh, i must tell you the situation if there is a cricket uh, game of cricket going between india and pakistan uh, people leave their work believe me and they start watching cricket on their uh, television screens and uh, it's like uh, the match is uh, more or less similar to a war going on <laughs> so uh, cricket is a very popular for this reason also and uh, the most important uh, in my opinion uh, uh, competitor of india you can say it, it might be south africa it can be australia but the most popular is uh, pakistan and they are equally well they are good players but who is the best in the cricket uh, i am not able to comment it because what, as i what country uh, right now i am not aware of the rankings actually right now i am not aware of the rankings uh, because okay. uh, yeah because i, I am not uh, uh, i have not updated my knowledge uh, about the cricket but uh, okay. more or less india uh, was able uh, till recently to maintain the top position in it and above all 
across the world the most revenue in cricket is generated in india so it's also uh, most important cricket uh, the game, most important game in terms of the money because uh, in india cricket earns most money among all the games okay okay i see so next question maybe it's um, some strange so what is the most dangerous do you have in india i mean criminal what is the most dangerous most dangerous animal uh, do you have maybe plants etc okay this is very important question actually and uh, to be very frank the government in india is putting a lot of effort in order to fight the crime against women but at the same time the number of crimes against women uh, is still uh, more or less significant this number has to come down so crimes against women starting from robbery to very serious gender based violence is significant but you will be amazed to hear one specific thing not a single crime has occurred against the foreign tourists and if they have occurred their number is very small like we do not get to read it uh, popularly in the national newspapers which are very 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 precise if there is a crime uh, taking place they will publish it in uh, so they are very precise in terms of publication so for a tourist visiting india india is safe in terms of uh, these crimes against women what you should be beware is about cheating uh, for example uh, at some places if an auto rickshaw uh, fare is 200 rupees you might be cheated and they will take 400 rupees from you just because you are not able to negotiate well and just because you do not know what is the actual fare so uh, there are solutions for that also in the major cities of india now you have the prepaid taxi system for example in russia uh, we have uh, uber yeah uh -huh. so like in india also we have uber and there is uh, ola ola cabs and some other brands are also there they are replacing this kind of a system where the foreigners were being cheated and uh, were being uh, you know uh, be fooled they were asked for more money uh, where the actual uh, fare was uh, relatively less but i think uh, cheating is uh, the most uh, risky kind of thing apart from that if uh, that if i should be very specific there is no criminal threat on any tourist of any kind because uh, the most important threat on tourists across the world is in terms of terrorism today and in india it's very safe very very safe believe me you will not hear uh, yeah you will you will never hear that reports are being uh, coming about terrorism from india it's very safe uh, very recently i heard president putin uh, appreciating india for its uh, efforts in uh, countering terrorism uh, which was kind of pre preparatory uh, methods like preventive methods in order to be prepared if if something happens so it's extremely safe for tourists believe me and i uh, always used to do and i am also inviting you again to india to see how safe it is okay i hope in future yes yeah i will uh, i will visit your country yes and you have to be my guest <laughs> of course it's um it's my goal actually i will be on it um oh okay finally um can you describe uh what is india how do you see your country your life and people from outside from abroad as i told you uh there are a lot of things india holds from its university uh, traditions of highest standards to its values india has good quality education india also has good quality traditions about traditions i must tell you india believes in a philosophy in hindi it is called vasudhaiv kutumbakam this means we accept uh, that uh, the entire world is a family and we accept that 
uh, every person uh, coming to our home is like a god so we have a very friendly policy of accepting guests and uh, uh, this makes us unique another thing which i should reiterate is uh, unity in diversity india very diverse in terms of values in terms of culture language religions but still they have a common uh, thing which binds them together that's the unity that's the uh, strong fabric of india so when i see my country from here uh, to be very precise i see people have still uh, they have relatively lesser employment generation opportunities if you compare uh, with uh, very well developed countries and uh, emerging countries uh, like china we are still behind but still they are very hard working they are very uh, dedicated and uh, they never believe in competition with any other country they believe in competing with themselves what they were tomorrow what they are tomorrow so i see that the people are very welcoming i uh, uh, see that the people believe in very core values which i mentioned the vasudev kutumbakam and the value that we we treat our guest like our god these are very fundamental values which binds india into a, a very strong fabric and creates it different from any other country in the world every country in the world has its something special which makes it special russia has something special which makes russia special uh, america has something every country has this is something which makes india special okay yes i agree sankit uh thank you for conversation uh i hope this video um will be interesting for people for people around world um so um guys who will uh see this who, who will watch this video uh please stay your comments and we will um, ask my friend amkit and um i will answer you um for your questions thank you all thank you oleg thank you so much and uh, i would like to extend my message to all the viewers of this video uh, that uh, india is a very uh, exciting country in terms of its rich traditions culture values ethics and you must take the opportunity of my friend oleg who has introduced you to india to visit india live india and i am very sure that it is not going to disappoint you thank you oleg for your initiative thank you for inviting me for this discussion thank you very much okay, and thank you the most important thing long live the india russia relationship <laughs> okay yes i agree <laughs>